Hello Year 12s and welcome back to Mathematics. In today's lesson we're continuing our topic of sequences and series and we're going to look at the next type of special series or the next type of special sum, a geometric series. Now last lesson we talked about arithmetic series and so when we added together an arithmetic series, for, so this is for an arithmetic progression, the sum of an arithmetic progression, we end up getting two formulas, n over 2, a plus l if we get given the last term or over to 2a plus n minus 1d if we know the common difference. So what we're going to do is essentially do the exact same thing. So figure out the sum of a geometric progression. Now if you remember from geometric progressions, a geometric progression was when we had, uh, when we were multiplying by common ratio each time. So here tn was equal to a r n minus 1. And so when we are dealing with a geometric progression, the way that we get the formula for geom sum of a geometric progression is a little bit different. So let's have a go at that. So when we are summing a geometric progression, the way that we derive this formula is just like the last lesson, we're going to add the first n term. So here, the first term of our geometric progression is a. Then the second term in our geometric progression is, well, if you remember, so... And when we deal with a geometric progression, we're multiplying by that common ratio r. So the next term would be a r. And then the next term after that, we multiply by another r. So that'd be a r squared. And we'll continue this pattern. And if you remember, the gen formula for the um, general term of a geometric progression is a r n minus 1. So the last term will be a r n minus 1. Okay. Now, what we're going to do with this particular um, equation is actually we're going to multiply the whole thing by r. Now here, I'm going to multiply this by r, so the first term is just going to be, well, a times r is just going to give me a r. So that's the first term. The second term was a r, and if I multiply that by r, I get a r squared. And if I multiply that term, I get a r cubed. And we'll continue this, all the, continue this all the way until we get, well, what's the last term? Well, the last term would be, oh, actually, let me just write in the next term as well. The next a r cubed plus all the way until the end, and the last term, if we had a r to the n minus 1 and we times that by r, we get a r to the n. Now the reason why, actually I'll include the second last term as well, the second last term here. Now if you have a look here, what do you notice? When we multiply by r, we end up getting just the same term, but just shifted 1 over. So what we can do is we can subtract the two formulas together. So here I'm going to subtract these two. So we're going to subtract 6.2 minus 6.1. And so here on my left hand side I'm going to get r, the partial sum, r times the partial sum, minus the partial sum. And that's going to be equal to, well when we subtract the two, well if you notice, each one of these pairs are going to actually just cancel each other out. And so here, what are we left with? Well, we're left with a from the first sum, partial sum, and we're left with a r to the n minus 1 from that second partial sum. So here I'm left with a r to the power n minus a. And then the following step is what we can do is we can factorize both of the sides. If you have a look on my left hand side, I both have this, I have this um, partial sum Sn. So I can factorize out Sn and I'm left with R minus 1. And on my right hand side, I have this common factor of A or the starting term. And I can factorize that out. So therefore, Sn is just going to equal to, when I rearrange this, A times R to the power N minus 1 in brackets divided by R minus 1. And so that, this is the formula we're going to use for the sum of a geometric progression. The formula is a, our starting term, times r, out of the pi, r to the power n minus 1 over r minus 1. Or another way that you can write this is you can just flip the order of both of these brackets, oh, both of these terms here, and so we get a 1 minus r to the power n over a 1 minus r. And so usually, I think, usually I would use this second form when r is uh, less than r is less than zero so it's negative uh, or in particular I would use this particular formula here okay so this is the formula we're going to use and as you notice here unlike the previous version both of these versions actually have the same thing and we can't just get the last term and figure it out so what we're going to need for both of these formulas is we need a and we need r the common ratio and we also need to have, figure out how many terms we're summing together, n. 
So we need both a, we need all three of these values in order to um, use this formula. And the sec other thing is if the value of r is negative, we usually use the second formula, but it's still totally fine if you use the first one. The first one actually fixes, it still will be fine. Okay, so let's have a look at this example. So here, find the sixth partial sum of this GP. So we've got two, negative six, 18, and so on. What we want to do is actually, when we, we want to find the sixth partial sum. So the sixth partial sum is S of six. And so what we need to do is we need to figure out what A is, we need to figure out what R is, and we want to figure out, figure out what N is. So here, we've actually figured out what N is. N is just because it's a sixth partial sum. N is equal to six. A is just going to equal to my starting term, two. And to find the common ratio, all we need to do is just take two consecutive terms. So here I've got this 18 and the previous term was negative six. And so we can divide the two and we get a common ratio of negative three. Okay, so here when we want to find the six partial sum, I'm going to use a formula uh, A times uh, here, ugh, let me just get my notes out. Um, A times, uh, 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 r squared r to the power n minus one over r minus one. Now, what I said as well was um, this: uh, we can use the other version. In particular, if we are dealing with a negative value of r, and I'm going, I'm just going to show you how both of these um, formulas actually work out here. Um, but if you want to find an exact value, you often want to use this second version if you've got a negative value. So here, I'm just going to substitute those values in. So I'm finding the six partial sum. So that's going to be two times negative three to the power six minus one over negative three minus one. And so if I put this in the calculator, two to the two times negative three to the power six. So if you're dealing with negative, just make sure you put a bracket around that negative sign as well, a uh, negative number as well. So here, if you have a look, I put in a negative with that minus three. Oh, that's not what I want. Minus one over negative three minus one. And so here I get negative 364. Now here you can also do the same thing on the other side. So this is also gonna be one minus three, uh, 1 minus negative 3 to the 6 over 1 minus negative 3. Uh, now the reason why this is actually, um, some people prefer this with a negative is because at the bottom when you've got that negative, um, it just becomes a plus and it's a little bit neater to work with. Um, and so here, uh, you can chuck this into your calculator once again, or you can simplify it. So here you would actually get 1 over 2, 1 minus negative 3 to the power 6, or just 1 minus 3 to the power 6, uh, which will give you one over two times bracket one minus three to the power of six. That will give you negative 364 as well. So that's, this is a formula we're going to be using when we're trying to find uh, the sum of a geometric progression. Okay, let's have a look at the next example. How many terms of the GP, 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus, and so on, must be taken in order for the sum to exceed 1 billion? Well, what we want to do here is we want to solve, well, what do we want to do? We want to solve SN is equal to 1 billion. So 1 billion is 1 with, I believe, 9 zeros after it. So here, we want to solve this particular equation. So when does this partial sum become equal to um, 1 billion? So what we need, we actually need to extract a bit of information from our geometric progression. Well, we want to find out as much as we can. What can we find out? Well, the value of A, our starting term, is going to be 2. And we can also find our common ratio by dividing any two consecutive terms. So here I can go 18 over 6. So I've got a common ratio of 3. And so what I can do is I can just write this all into my partial sum um, of a geometric progression equation. So here the formula was A bracket R minus 1 bracket over r minus 1 is equal to, and I want to solve this is equal to 1 million. And so I can sub in those values. So a is equal to 2, so this becomes 2 bracket 3 to the power n minus 1 over 3 minus 1 is equal to 1 billion. Okay, we can start simplifying this and start working out the, um, a few things. So if you have a look at the bottom, I've got 3 minus 1, that becomes um, 2. So this becomes uh, two, and so I can simplify this with the top, and so I'm left with three to the power n minus one is equal to one billion. 
The next step is I can move that negative one over. So I've got three to the power n is equal to one billion and one. And so as I continue to solve this, how do I get rid of exponentials? The opposite of an exponential, if you remember from that um, solving problems with um, arithmetic progressions, the geometric progressions is to take logs. So this becomes log three to the power n is equal to log one billion. Oh my gosh, what's happening here? One billion and one. And so uh, when you use the log laws, you, this becomes n log three is equal to log one billion and one and so therefore n is equal to log one billion and one over log three and so we can chuck this in our calculator log one billion one two three four five six seven eight one over log three so here we get 18.86 so 18.86 and so what we need to check here now is just check for s of 18, our partial sum of our first 18 terms and the partial sum of our first 19 terms. So let's actually put these into our formula. So the formula that we had was the partial sum is actually equal to 3 to the power n minus 1. So this is 3 to the power 18 minus 1 and 3 to the power 19 minus 1. And so 3 to the power 18 minus 1 is equal to 3, 8, 7, 4, 20428 and if you have a look how many digits is that one two three four five six seven eight nine so it's not quite uh, one billion um, so let's check the other one to the power of 19 what do we end up getting uh, one uh, one 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 six two two six one four six six Yep. And so here we can check the digits again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So here we've got a number over a billion. So here, um, the 19th partial sum will exceed 1 billion. Okay. So that's how we can also answer similar questions that we looked at in um, arithmetic progressions and geometric progressions, but now applying to um, sums of a geometric progression. Okay. So let's go on. To, let's flip over the page and have a look at another example. This is from the 2016 HSE paper. By summing the geometric series 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the power 4, or otherwise, find this following limit. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to sum this geometric series. We've got 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the power 4. When we are using our sum of geometric series, we need to get a few values. We need to get our starting term, we need to get our common ratio, and we need to get our number of terms. So if you have a look here, what is the starting term? Well, the starting term just happens to be the one at the start here. Okay, our common ratio is just gonna be when I take two consecutive terms and divide it. So let's say I pick these two, x squared divided by x will give me x. And so my common ratio is x. And the number of terms that you have a look, I just count them one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna have five terms in this particular equation, in this particular sum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be actually finding the sum of the first five terms. Um, actually, I'm gonna use this formula. So Sn is equal to the sum of the um, geometric progression is a times r, a, a times r to the power n minus one over r minus one. And so when I substitute this for my values I have here, the sum of the first five terms is going to be one times x to the power n, or x to the power five, because the value of n is five, minus one over x minus one, because that's a common ratio. And so we get x to the power five over minus one over x minus one. Okay, cool. Now we've done that summing of a geometric series. Let's have a look at this next part of this question. Find the limit of x goes to one of x to the power five minus one over x to the power x minus one. Now, when we did limits, what we usually do was we just substituted that x value into our limit. And so what you notice here is if I sub in x is equal to one, both the numerator becomes zero and the denominator becomes zero. And that's not very good. Zero over zero is not a limit that we can, is actually good. And that usually tells us that we need to do something else. Well, if you have a look at this guy over here, this guy is exactly the same as this guy over here. And what we found was that this is just a partial sum of these whole, these four, five terms. And so what I can do is I can just replace what I've highlighted here with, this is just the same as the limit of x goes to one of one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the power four. 
because what we've done in the first part is we've shown that this whole sum here, this sum here of the first five terms is just equal to this guy over here. This sum here is equal to this whole expression here. And so now that I've done this, I can actually just take the limit by substituting x is equal to 1 into all these terms. So this becomes 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, and so that becomes 5. And so my limit is equal to 5 for this particular example. Okay, so that's how we can apply this particular sum of geometric series with these little trickier questions. The summing of the geometric series part wasn't too hard, it's just the how do we apply it in some other scenarios is that little bit trickier bit. Okay. Final question I'm going to do, and then we'll have a look at a few questions in our online lesson. The number of members of a new social uh, new social networking site doubles every day. On day one, there were 27 members. On day two, there was 54 members. Now, pause. Have a, just like we looked at last lesson, how do we know that this is a geometric progression? What word indicates to you that we are going to be dealing with a geometric progression here? Well, if you have a look at this question, the phrase that indicates to me that you, we are dealing with a geometric progression is this part here, doubling every day. When we double something, that means we're timesing by two. And so that is a common ratio. We're multiplying each time. And so what we're going to, this, this is the phrase that indicates to me we're dealing with a geometric progression here. So this question has to deal with a geometric progression. So we're dealing with a GP here. Let's have a look at the questions and what they're asking. How many members were there on day 12? Once again, pause. What's this question asking me to do? Is it asking me to find how many members were there accumulatively every single day, with, as in um, how many members were on the first day, and then on top of that, how many day members were on the second day, and adding that all on together? No, we're actually wanting to find how many members were just on that 12th day. So here, what I want to actually do is find Tn. And so the formula for Tn, if you remember, for a geometric um, progression is I want ARn minus 1 a times r to the power n minus 1. And so here we want to find those values. So a is just our first term, which happens to be 27 times r, our common ratio, because we're doubling, that's just going to be 2 to the power, 2 and times r to the power n minus 1. And so here we want to actually find t12. And so that's going to be 27 times 2 to the power 12 minus 1, which is 27 times 2 to the power 11, which I believe gives you, I've done this in advance, 5, 5, 2, 9, 6, I believe. Okay, so that's this first part of this question. So here, we just have to read the question really carefully. We're not trying to find the sum yet. Um, we actually are trying to find uh, what term is this, um, is uh, how many members there were on that 12th day. So that's just T12, the 12th term. Okay, part two. On which day was the number of members greater than 10 million? So once again, I'm just solving for Tn is equal to 10 million. Okay, so let's use our formula from the previous part. 27 times 2 to the power n minus 1 is equal to 10 million. And so first part, p n minus 1 is equal to 10 million. 1, 2, 1, 2 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, divided by 27. And then when we're dealing with exponentials, the way that we fix this up is by taking x. And so here we get n minus 1 log 2 is equal to log... 10 million over 27 and so here n is equal to 1 plus log 10 million over 27 over log 2 and so I can chuck this in my calculator I'm going to do this over here is equal to when I chuck this in my calculator <clears throat> I get 1 uh, plus log oh, log 10 million so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 over 27 oh my gosh over over log 2 so it gives me 19.49 so what we want to check is the 19th term and the 20th term and so here, when I sub these two values in, I've already done this in advance. The 19th term will be uh, 707, 7888, and the 20th term will be 1415 
And so here we want to find the first term which is greater than 10 million, which happens to be this 20th term. So it takes 20 days to surpass 10 million. Okay. Now these first two questions were geometric progression questions. It's stuff that we looked at earlier in this topic of sequences and series. Let's have a look at the third part. The site earns 0 0.5 cents per member per day. How much money did the site earn in the first 12 days? Give your answer correct, uh, answer to the nearest dollar. Now let's just think about this for a second. The site earns 0 0.5 cents per member per day. So let's think about this. On the first day, there's 27 members. And so on the first day, they get paid for those 27 members. So that's times by 0 0.5 cents. On the second day, there are 54 members. Now, that 54 includes that 27 there, presumably. And so here we're at timesing that by 0 0.5 cents as well. Then on the third day, so, um, and we get our, uh, and we, and so here we get a total amount. So this is A and B. On the third day, they double again, and then we multiply that by 0 0.5 cents, and we get a third amount. So what do we need to do for this question? We want to figure out how much money they earn all together. Well, what we want to do is actually add up all of these values together. So here, for this question, we want to actually find the sum of the first, well, here in this case, the first 12 days. We want to find the sum of the first 12 days um, for this particular question. So what I'm going to do for this question is I'm actually going to find out how many members were there on the website altogether um, for the sum of the first 12 days for the total number of members. So here I'm going to go S12 is equal to A R N minus 1 times R over R minus 1. And so here the starting term was 27. The common ratio was 2, it's for 12 days, and we're subtracting 1 over 2 minus 1 for um, the number of, uh, what's it called, the uh, rate, of uh, the common ratio minus 1. And so here when we put this in our calculator, um, this just becomes, so at the bottom it just becomes 1, so we don't need to worry about that, so this just becomes 27 times 2 to the power 12 minus 1. So here, that tells me that altogether, so uh, altogether, um, there was one one zero five six five. So you can kind of think of this as how many hits were on the website altogether. So on the first day, you would have only gotten twenty seven hits because there was new twenty seven new members. Then on the second day, or um, there was fifty four members, so there was fifty four additional views on that website. And on the third day, there was there was then another hundred and. Uh, for 108 views, and so this tells me that there's a total number of uh, 110,000 views over the 12 days. So from here, what would we need to do? Well, we want to find out how much they're going to get paid. They get paid 0 0.5 cents per member per day. And so what this means is, we're just going to take this 110565 and times it by 0 0.5 cents. So when I times this by 0 0.5, we get 5528.2.5. Uh, cents. Okay, great. But if you have a look at the question, we want it to the nearest dollar. How do we convert it from cents to dollars? We just need to divide this answer by 100. So we're going to divide this by 100. So we're left with $552.83. $52.83. So that's how we can answer this question. So here, this is once again, that's one of those questions where we need to be careful. Is it asking me for me to find the particular term in our sequence, or is it actually find, asking me to find the total sum altogether? So that's it for today's lesson. We're going to go through a few more HSE questions in our online lesson. But let's just do a quick summary of what we looked at today. In today's lesson, we looked at the sum of geometric progression. And here, we need to use this formula. A times R to the power N minus 1 over R minus 1. And here, there's another version when you've got a negative value of R. They both work regardless of the scenario. And we went through a few questions where we need to apply this formula. So that's it for today, Year 12. If there's any questions, feel free to ask me any questions on email or Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Um, and But that's it. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, stay wonderful, and I'll see you in our online lesson. Bye.